Hello homeschoolers! Welcome to our homeschool day. What a wonderful world! Now my name is Shannon. I'm a naturalist here at the Nature Station and today I'm going to be talking to you about aquatic plant adaptations. Okay, so aquatic plants are plants that grow in or near water and an adaptation is a feature or trait that helps a species to survive. So we're going to talk about some special features that allow these plants to thrive in their habitat, in their aquatic, water-based habitat. Now the plants can grow in a few different ways. They can be completely submerged. That means growing under the water. They can be what is called emergent, which means they are growing with their roots in the water, but then the plant itself grows out above the water there. or they can be floating, which means the leaves actually rest on the surface of the water. So we're going to talk about an example of each of those types of plants and discuss some of the strategies they have for surviving those special adaptations. Now the first plant we're going to discuss is actually right here behind me and it is a tree. It is the bald cypress. Now cypress trees grow very, very close to water and they're often in areas that sometimes flood, meaning that their root systems will be entirely covered up by water. Now one obstacle that aquatic plants do face is getting enough air, enough oxygen to their roots. So a plant like a bald cypress that is growing in an area that floods frequently may have a harder time getting oxygen to its roots. So they adapt to this, they change in a couple of different ways. One way is that they have very shallow roots. They're a little closer to the surface of the soil, which makes it easier for them to exchange gas and to get some extra oxygen there. Another feature is by having a special tissue in their root. Now the special tissue is called aranchyma. So this aranchyma tissue is basically going to have these empty spaces which allow it to store and to hold gas and air. Uh, many different aquatic plants have this feature. This just allows them to get enough air to survive. Another adaptation of the bald cypress are their knees. Now these are basically part of the roots that stick out above the ground and they can stick out above in areas that often flood. So this area right here is currently dry, but we often do have water that's kind of standing right above the surface of the ground. So these knees extend up over the water. Now it's thought that they may help with gas exchange like the aranchyma, helping to bring enough oxygen to the tree's roots. And it's also thought that they may help to stabilize the bald cypress tree in this soft, wet soil. Okay, next up we are going to take a look at an example of a floating plant. Now some floating plants can be very, very large, think uh, giant water lilies, but we're going to take a look at a very tiny floating plant. So let's go reach in and grab it. Okay, so I have probably about six or so of these plants right here in my hand right now. This is duckweed. Now, duckweed is a floating plant. Let's try to bring it out right here. It has a single leaf and then a long, thin rootlet that hangs down into the water. Now, it's thought that this rootlet actually helps to support the plant and keep it from basically falling upside down. So this rootlet helps to stabilize the plant in the water. We often think of, of plants as using their roots to absorb nutrients from the soil. The duckweed doesn't really do that though. Because it's floating on the surface of the water, it actually uses the underside of its little leaf right here, its frond, to absorb nutrients. The cells on the bottom side of this frond are actually very, very thin walled. This allows them to pull in nutrients from the water very, very easily. Now if we go to the other side of the frond, the upper side that's floating on the surface of the water, that actually has a cool adaptation as well. 
Now, all plants have stomata, small um, pores that allow for gas exchange, for oxygen, for carbon dioxide to pass into the plant. A lot of our land plants are going to want to conserve water because water can also be evaporated through those stomata. So what a lot of land plants will do is close off their stomata. But if you are an aquatic plant floating on the surface of the water, you don't have to worry about losing too much water. So in many aquatic plants, that stomata actually stays open all of the time. And so it is constantly open, constantly pulling in uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen from the air. Now duckweed has the ability both to flower and create seeds and to actually bud. The thallus, that leaf or frond at the top, can actually begin to form a new leaf which will bud off and create a brand new plant. When you look at these duckweeds, can you see the little buds attached to each leaf? Duckweed is a good name for this plant. It does provide food for a large number of waterfowl, so things like ducks and geese. And it also uses duck and geese as a way to transport itself to brand new bodies of water. Because of its very small size, it can actually get stuck to the feet or feathers of waterfowl and basically hitch a ride along with that bird to a brand new pond. Okay now, for our final plant, we're going to look at one that is submerged, that lives under the water. And it has one very interesting feature. Now if you look behind me here, you can see our horsetail. This is an emergent plant, one that has its roots in the water, but the rest of it grows above the water. And what you can see is that it's holding itself up. Plants that are out on the land have to have a more rigid structure so that they can hold themselves straight up. But if you are a plant growing submerged in the water, you don't need to do that. You can just be very, very floppy and loose and the water itself is going to support you. Now a good example of that is this right here. So it's hard to tell because it has just kind of flopped over without the support of the water. But this is a very kind of brushy looking plant called milfoil. Now milfoil is for the most part found entirely underwater and it has a few features that help it to live in that way. Now one feature of course is the fact that it doesn't have a very stiff structure. It doesn't have to waste energy on that because it is supported by the water. Another feature is the fact that it is very, very thin and feathery. So if you guys can see that right there. I'll show you what it looks like in, in the water as well. You can really see how feathery it is once it's in the water. But those thin feathery leaves actually increase the surface area of the plant. So just like other aquatic plants, the submerged plants do have to have some exposure to air, to different gases and they're going to absorb gases from the water. And it's much easier for them to do that if they have a greater surface area. So all of these little feathery fronds on this milfoil increases its surface area and allows it to absorb many more gases such as oxygen from the water. Okay, let's take a look at it in the water because like I said, on, once they're out in the air, these plants are a little harder to, to see and really understand what the shape of them is because they just kind of flop over. So let's put it in the water here. Okay, so there is our milfoil. Now it's just kind of floating along in the water. Milfoil can flower and it will send up the flowers above the surface of the water and that way it can be pollinated by the wind but it can also spread by just breaking off the bits and pieces of it and it can travel to new bodies of water in that way. Now that is actually an issue we have with this particular species of milfoil. This is Eurasian milfoil which was introduced many years ago probably from some the aquarium plant and now what happens is when a boat goes through a lake with milfoil, little pieces of milfoil can be chopped up by that boat's motor or get stuck to the underside of the boat. And then when it goes to a new body of water, it can be introduced into this new lake. 
and then those little pieces of milfoil will just continue to grow and create whole new colonies of milfoil. Now this is definitely not a good thing for us because it is an invasive species, but it demonstrates another way that aquatic plants can grow and spread. Okay, thank you so much for attending and learning about aquatic plant adaptations. I hope you guys had a good time learning how these different plants can thrive in an aquatic environment. And the next time you're out for a hike near a body of water, take a look around and see if you can see any plants displaying any of those adaptations that we discussed here today.